Um, good morning, everyone. My talk aims to introduce my research on the role of meteorology and avalanches during the Great War in the Alpine Front. In particular, I will talk about the sources that could be used in this project and why the narrative representations of the war, despite being of crucial importance, are not enough to reconstruct the environmental history of this front. For more than two and a half years during the Great War, over an approximately 600 kilometers long front in the Alpine range, hundreds of thousands of soldiers lived and fought in many places where battles had never occurred and in some cases where no human being had, had ever set foot. Fighting the war in such a geographical context brought the armies face to face with an unexpected enemy, the natural environment, which often became even more lethal than the weapons of the opposing forces. <coughs> Nature inflicted casualties on both the Italian and Austro-Hungarian armies in a variety of ways, for example, frostbite, lightnings, landslides, etc. Among these, uh, among these Avalanche played a particularly critical role. Estimations on the number of avalanche-related casualties in the Alpine front are remarkable. In the literature concerning this front, several authors propose different estimations, for example, Angeta, Berti, Frasser, Lichem, Roch. These published estimations range from 40,000 to 80,000 casualties. What is interesting about them, beyond how large these numbers are, and how broad the difference between the proposed numbers is, is that none of them are supported by any research. Starting from here, my talk revolves about, uh, around the following questions. Why are these estimations not supported by any scientific study? How has the study about avalanches, accidents, and more in general about the environmental history of this front been approached so far in historiography? And how could a deeper knowledge concerning these topics be achieved? In the historiography concerning the Alpine Front, the important role of nature, for example, the role of the terrain, of the weather, of the avalanches, is usually underlined. Since the end of the war, the constraints determined by nature have been constantly pointed out to improve the understanding of the different aspects of this front on which historians focus their attention. For example, to understand military operations, the relationship between military and civilians, the memory of the war, and more. Nevertheless, despite this constant recall of the importance of the environment, hardly ever nature and its relationship with humans have been, focus, have, have, have been the focus of any research. So far, historians have, have gained knowledge about nature at its relationship with humans in the Alpine Front almost exclusively through narrative accounts of the war. These narratives comprise first-hand accounts written during the war, such as diaries and letters, and works written after the war, such as biographies, autobiographies, memoirs, and narrative histories. The reason why these accounts and descriptions inside these sources monopolize the knowledge about the role of the environment is, firstly, their availability. The Great War is often called the literary war because it was documented extensively by its participants. No diary left off to record avalanche accidents, stated Diego Leone in his recent book, The Vertical War. Natural phenomena were part of authors' everyday life and thus they, they were a main subject in the narrative accounts of the war. A main part of the information recorded in these narratives could be referred to as factual, as it concerned specific events, places, or periods. This kind of information, which stems from personal observations of, or from other sources, such as comrades in arms, is crucial, as it regards a remarkably wide range of aspects concerning the characteristics of avalanche accidents. For example, concerning the causes underlying the accidents, these sources, from these sources we can know about the thickness of the snow cover 
as well about the preventive measures adopted by the armies. And with regard to the consequences of the accidents, through these sources we are aware of, for example, the activity that was being conducted by the victims of avalanches, as well as the psychologi psychological impact of the threat represented by the environment. From another point of view, this factual information has the disadvantages that it presents a local character. It is ex extremely heterogeneous between the different sources and it is not completely reliable. There is another kind of information in the narrative sources of the war concerning avalanche accidents. It is information that is more abstract and that resulted from the generalization of the factual information known by the authors. To give an example in regard to the causes of avalanche accidents, from the book of Diego Leoni we know of the memoir of Francesco Leich, who stated that accidents were due to the extent deforestation of the sides of the mountains that was caused by the armies. This, gen this generalization that can be found in the narrative accounts of the war, as the different estimation concerning the number of avalanche-related casualties, should, on, should, should not be proposed in historiography without at least highlighting the, the lack of any published in-depth study that, propose, that, that supports them. Still, these generalizations made by the protagonists of the war are extremely important because they can provide great inspiration for new research questions. The validation of these generalizations and of the estimation of the casualties through in-depth studies remains a key step to clear some of the fog that lies, on, that lies over the environmental history of this front. So, how it is possible to validate them? And how can we start from these generalizations and use the factual information in the narrative accounts to reach a deeper knowledge of the role of avalanches? First, a valuable contribution could be made by implementing new methodological approaches the local character of the factual information presented in diaries can be overcome by studying it not just individually, but also collectively and statistically. For example, by creating a database of avalanche accidents through the, info through the information derived from the diaries. A second improvement could be brought into these historical studies with regard to the material. As we already say, factual information inside, inside diaries presents the disadvantages that it is extremely heterogeneous between the different sources and it is not completely reliable. These two aspects impede the collective and statistical study remarkably. But diaries are not the only available source. There is another main, main one that has been rarely considered in historiography for the study of this topic. The documents produced by the armies. Although these documents contain reduced descriptions, they present the, advantages, the advantage that they have been collected through more standardized and systematic methods in comparison to individual narrative accounts. Another contribution to the environmental history of this front could come from a deeper focus on environmental and topographical factors. Gathering, for example, historical data about the meteorological conditions will allow us to know about the avalanche risk during the war. In turn, the relationship between avalanche risk and avalanche accidents can be geographically and temporally analyzed. The result of such a study could improve the knowledge about the causes underlying the accidents considerably. To conclude, historiography concerning the Alpine Front has deemed the role of nature in this front as crucial. Still, few works have centered the attention on it, and thus its real characteristics are still largely unknown. This is particularly true for the characteristic of avalanche accidents that occurred during the war. The narrative accounts of the Alpine Front represent a fundamental source to collect factual information and inspire new research questions about avalanche accidents. In addition, the exploration of other sources, such as historical meteorological data and armies reports, 
and the development of new approaches associated to natural science and digital methods, such as the creation of geographical databases, seems like useful contributions that could lead to a turning point in the study concerning the environmental history of this front. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>